to this amazing silsila on Madhini channel, Remedies of Evil in our society. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So once again, we have come with some very important and uh, vital issues that we have in our community, in our society, in our lives as, as married spouses, uh, between relatives, between husband and wife, between children. Inshallah, Azza wa Jal, this week we are going to discuss the hukuk the rights of the wife over the husband and the rights of the husband over the wife. We are going to speak about the rights of spouses, inshallah, Azza wa Jal. So, before we get into our discussion for today, a humble appeal to my dearest and most esteemed viewers, inshallah, ke aaj, let us first make some good, good intentions. The more intentions you would make for perhaps watching this is love from beginning to end, you would make this intention that whatever good you will hear, you will uh, learn, you will study, you will convey and pass this on to others as well. For the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa you will watch this silsila from beginning to end. And as far as conveying the message, our beloved Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa had mentioned, Balligu anni walaw ayah. Convey on my behalf even if it is a single verse. So dear viewers on this of Madhini channel, chale, niyate karne ke baad, after making some good good intentions, I would like to narrate a virtue and blessing of reciting the rood and salawat upon the Holy Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Our beloved Nabi, the master, the owner of Jannah, the possessor of Ni'mah, the distributor of, of Rahmah, Ni'mah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam had mentioned in a hadith, the one who recites 50 the rood upon me every day, I will shake hands with him. On the day of Qiyamah, subhanallah, the one who will recite 50 darood upon the Holy Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam will be blessed with this opportunity to shake hands, to touch the blessed and mubarak hands of our beloved Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, subhanallah. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Salatan wa salaman alayka ya sayyidi ya rasulullahi wa sallam alayka ya sayyidi ya nabiyyallah. So dear viewers and listeners of Madhini channel, after listening to the blessings of reciting the rood and salawat upon the holy rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, ayye hamurap mil karke, together with love and affection we would recite a na'at in the praise of our beloved nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. So for that I would want you to sit back, relax, and recite with me, inshallah, so that you may also be rewarded for praising the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A very famous and renowned kalam and na'at in the praise of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Milke parte hain. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rasulullah. Ya Rasulullah. حبيب الله صلى الله عليك يا يا رسول الله وسلم عليك يا حبيب الله تو شمعی رسالت ہے عالم تیرا پروانا تو 
शमरी सागत है आदम तेरा परवान परवाना तो माँ है नगुबत है जलवाए जाना ना तो माँ नबूबत है जलवाए जाना ना जो सा को सर के चेहरे से निकाबो थे जो सा को सर के चेहरे से निकाबो थे माना आका हर दिल पर मैं खाना मैं खाना हर आख हो पर माना तू शम मेरी सादत है आदम तेरा परवाना तू माँ है नबूबत है जलवाए जाना ना एंड दिस इज द रियलिटी दिस इज द हकीकत एंड द ट्रूथ दैट हु एवर यू आर वे एवर यू आर वट एवर वी प्रोजेस इट इज इन डीड द सदकार ऑफ अवर बिलव नबी सल्लाम सुबह पीते हैं तेरे दर का खाते है तेरे दर का पीते हैं तेरे दर का खाते हैं तेरे दर का सादत है आदम तेरा परवाना तू माँ है नबूबत है जलवाए जाना ना और गिर पड़ के यहाँ पहुंचा मर मर के मर इसे पाया गिर पर के यहाँ पहुंचा मर मर के इसे पाया छूटे संगे दर जाना तू शी सात आदम तेरा परवाना परवाना तू माँ नबूबत है जलवाए जाना صلوا على الحبيب صلى الله تعالى على محمد مرحبا جي فيوز اند لسن بدني تشانل ما شاء الله افتر وي هاف كومبليتد اند وي هاف لسن اند ريسايتد ذا نعت از وي ار ديسكسينج ذا رايتس اوف سباوسز ابون ايتش اند اذر 
Alhamdulillah, last week we had also covered many angles and aspects regarding the rights of the woman or how a husband should be. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Today as well, we are going to touch upon these issues because these are those things we should know as human beings. For many of us are married. And Alhamdulillah, many of us are getting our children, our youth, our own kids going to be getting married this month, this year, in the coming years, subhanallah. But many a times by not giving them this tarbiyat, by not teaching them and giving them this nasihat and advices according to Quran and Hadith, many of those who are married for many years and many of those who are getting into marriages suffer many issues related to marriages. Whereas when they cannot control, they cannot tolerate themselves anymore, no matter what the problem may be, it could be an anger management problem, understanding the spouse, knowing the rights and the hukuk of each another. And when these things are not understood according to Sharia, according to Islam, then it leads to something, so to that thing which no relationship should be in. And that is a divorce, that could be talaq. Sometimes it goes even worse. And it's something which we as human beings, we as insan, or as Muslims, before getting involved into that, it is simple as this. Misal pesh karne ke liye, aapko samjhane ke liye. If you basically want to be a doctor, then you have to study and earn that degree. A person has to work hard. He would strive in that line in order to achieve that degree. Likewise, if it's to be a doctor, engineer, to be qualified for any skill that you want, as far as the secular education is concerned, a person will have to strive for that. Likewise, if you want to learn about salah, you want to learn about namaz, just by watching those who read namaz, you cannot become a namazi, you cannot become perfect in salah, how the recitation should be, how a person should recite, how his ruku should be, how should he make his sajda, how should he stand in qiyam. All these things are learned and studied, dear viewers and listeners of the channel. Likewise, when a person is ready to get married, when now he can afford having a wife, being in a relationship, then it's very important that the husband should learn the right of his wife and the wife should learn the rights of her husband so that after marriage, there are no difficulties. Things could go smoothly, things could go easily, subhanAllah. Let me tell you, for example, just getting into the matter, into the middle of this matter, inshallah, as we are always running out of time. And today, mashallah, we have many, many madani pearls to share the glorious Quran is there for us to learn many nasihat and advices from. There are the blessed hadith of the Holy Rasul sallallahu ta'ala which are also there for us to take many nasihat and advice from. So therefore, inshallah, let me give you some examples. As many of us are facing difficulties as far as spouses are concerned, it is for this reason that the wife cannot understand the husband or maybe the husband cannot understand the wife. Whatever nitty-gritty issues may be there in a relationship, subhanallah, look at the sahaba ikram. Look at the Tabi'een, look at the Awliya, look at the Salihin. Subhanallah, it is really amazing, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, how they led their lives, how they spent years in marriages without any difficulties. Subhanallah. Let me give you, for example, a very, very famous Khalifa of Islam, Subhanallah, Hazrat Umar Farooq, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. It is mentioned that one person came to his door. And I'm sure you have heard this narration before, but today as well, inshallah, just listen to this narration in order to earn thawab and in order to rectify or to implement this in your life as well. Subhanallah. Umar Farooq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, Allah, Allah, Allah. In ke darwaze pe shakhs aata hai. One person came to his door and knocked on the door in order to complain, in order to relate his problem in the court of Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. And as he knocked on the door, he heard that Amirul Mu'mineen, Hazrat Umar Farooq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu is having some difficulties in his own house. And when he heard this, that there is some issue, there is some difficulty in the house of Umar Farooq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. So, I have a problem here. Why should I relate my house problem to Hazrat when Hazrat has his own problems in his own life? Allah, Allah, Allah. Thinking this in his heart and mind, he decided to leave. He just stepped uh, back by moving a few steps. And as he intended to move on and go away from the Umar Farooq, Hazrat Umar Farooq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, subhanallah, he opened the door and he stopped him and he asked him, 
What is the matter? You had come to my door. Have you come for something? How can I assist you? How may I help you? Allah, Allah, Allah. That person said, Huzur, indeed, I had come to you. And the reason for me to come to you was to relate my problem that I've got. I have some issues with my wife. I have some issues with my spouse. And due to those issues, I thought I would bring in your court, in your bargain, and you would give me some solutions for it. But I saw that your house is a problem. You have this problem in your own house. So how and why should I relate this problem to you? Allah, Allah, Allah. Saying this, Hazrat Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu with muhabbat and love, subhanallah, explained it to him that look, indeed, I have the same problem as you, but my wife is the means and the reason for me to be saved from the hellfire. Subhanallah. Meaning that dil, my heart is connected to my wife, to my spouse. And therefore, it does not wander here and there for other women. In other words, she is the cause and the reason for me to be saved from the hellfire. Subhanallah. As well as my wife, she washes my clothes. She takes care of my needs. She looks after my property. This is my wealth. This is my property which I earn, which I own. And she is the one that stays on site. She looks after my children. She looks after my property. She prepares wonderful and beautiful meals for me. Subhanallah. So these are the things that she does for me. In other words, whenever she's upset, I recall the favors she had done for me. I recall those things which she does for me time to time. And I overlook those issues which she's upset about. I do not retaliate. I do not act upon that. I do not get upset and start to raise my voice. I remember those things that she does for me in return of that. I keep quiet. Subhanallah. Listening to this, that person who came to the door of Hazrat Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu was shocked and astonished. Amazed by the answer of Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he said, Afsos, Huzur, Afsos. I am in a shock for those favors even my wife does for me. Ye to wo cheeze jo meri bibi khud meri liye bhi karti hai. She does that for me. But I did not think the way you have thought, Huzur. I, 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 in fact, I retaliate when she's angry. When she says a few words, I, I also give jawab for that. I back chat. And then I said something, she said something. It becomes into a fight and argument. But Huzur, from today, I will practice upon those wonderful Madani pearls you had given me. Subhanallah. This wonderful, precious advice that you had given me. So dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, we should try and reflect and ponder upon those things. None of our relationships are pure. In other words, no one can say, I don't have a problem in my relationship. Yes, difficulties do come. This is just my thought and my good opinion is that you don't have any problem. But from what is common, from something which is mostly understood, that there are issues, there are ups and downs, there are difficulties in relationships. But it's upon how you handle them. Subhanallah. If only we could learn the hukuk of our spouses in accordance to Sharia, ah, in accordance with the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, listen very attentively, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel. So, Imam Abu Abdullah Muhammad bin Ahmad bin Abu Bakr Qurtubi rahmatullahi ta'ala Ali states regarding this verse in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَهُنَّ مِثْلُ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Translation from Kanzu Liman. And the women also have rights similar to those of men over them in accordance with Islamic law. So the women also have rights similar to those of men. So it means men have rights and women have rights over each another. But these days our problem is about who has more authority, who has more power, who is the owner, who is the hakim, who is the ruler, who is the dominant one in the house. Allah Akbar. And trying to prove this. Many a times our relationship is down the drain. 30 years of marriage, 40 years of marriage. It's about the business. It's about wealth. It's about dignity. It's about pride. It's about ego. It's about those things which isn't the quality of a Muslim. Salman ki sifat nahi hai. Allah Allah. Chahiye. We should try and first learn those things. Keep aside our differences. Keep aside our understanding. First try to understand what Allah Azza wa Jal and His beloved Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala wants from you as a Muslim. 
what's required from you as a Muslim. Subhanallah. So regarding this verse which I have mentioned, Imam Abu Abdullah Muhammad bin Ahmad bin Abu Bakr Qurtubi rahmatullahi ta'ala states regarding this verse, the rights of the woman are important and necessary just as the rights of the husband are important and necessary. It's very important that we learn these rights. What are the hukuk? What are the rights? It is so important. For example, Hazrat Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu had mentioned, Bila Shuba, without any doubt, I like to beautify myself for my wife just as she likes to beautify herself for me. Look at the rights. This is, this is the rights that you should know as a husband, as a wife. Many a times we don't like to beautify and, and have that zenith and make ourselves look stunning and gorgeous. You know, our niyat is always, may Allah forbid that our niyat should not be this, that I am putting this wonderful clothes and spending all my husband's money to buy this wonderful gown for that shadi, for this wedding, for somebody else's function. Sometimes you can even beautify or you should mostly beautify yourself or your husband so that he is always attracted towards you. Wife should do this in order to keep her husband with her so that the husband is always protected, his eyes is always guided, his heart is always set to one woman. Allahu Akbar. Hazrat Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, I in return of what my wife likes to do for me, I also like to do the same for her. Subhanallah. How many of us in society these days have bath, use nice clothes, use ritter perfume, dress up, look tidy, look clean and look stunning for this intention or with this niyat that my wife should also like the way I look. How many of us dear viewers in the Zimbabwe channel? Yes, learn from the sample, learn from the lifestyle of the Sahaba Ikram, Ridwanullah ta'ala alihim ajma'in. And subhanallah, Hazrat Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, I like to learn those things which are important for me upon my wife and I would prefer that my wife also learns. She studies and she acts upon those hukuk and rights in Islam which is lazim and important for her about me. Subhanallah. And regarding the rights, dear viewers and listeners of the Muslim channel, just like how we like nazafat, we like purity, it's just a nasihat and advice according to Sharia. Our beloved Nabi Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam had mentioned Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like people who are untidy. Hadithi Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha had mentioned that Nabi Paak sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam would always look clean and tidy. He was always beautiful, subhanallah. He is beautiful and he always looked clean. He was There was never a time in the life of our beloved Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam where he was not looking tidy, he was upset, or he was not clean. Allah, 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 impossible. Our beloved Nabi sallallahu ta'ala was stunning and he is stunning subhanallah. That Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha mentioned Nabi Paak sallallahu ta'ala would apply oil every second day on his head Mubarak subhanallah on his blessed hair and then he would always say Oh Aisha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like people who are untidy. This could also be the reason for your spouse not to be attracted to you as a husband. It's your responsibility, it's your duty to make sure that you look attractive you look nice, you look tidy, you look clean because cleanliness is also part of your faith, dear views and listen to the channel. Cleanliness is also part of your Iman, it is part of Islam, subhanallah, subhanallah. So also make this niyat that you will try and be clean as well as you will learn those hukuk, those things which are obligatory, which are lazim, which are important upon you for the wife as well as for the husband, subhanallah. Let's listen to this wonderful narration dear views of the Zamadini channel our aim and our objective is that we should try and make sabr we don't have sabr these days here very quickly we snap very quickly we get angry with each another we can't even wait for a moment in where we can make sabr in patience Allahu Akbar little bit problem happen the salt is less in the food husband gets angry the water was not presented in the glass that he likes to drink water in he gets upset my clothes isn't ironed properly. Husband gets upset. You got me up late. He gets upset. The salt was more or was less. The food was hot or too cold. The rice or the taste was not according to his taste. Allah Allah. These issues become a problem. Whereas those issues which are lazim, which are important, which are necessary. Those hukuk and rights where he's supposed to get angry. He doesn't get angry. 
and those things which he not supposed to get angry for supposed to have understanding supposed to have sabr supposed to have patience allah allah when are we going to build those patients my dear uh, viewers and listeners madini channel subhanallah when are we going to build such a relationship subhanallah it is mentioned that our beloved nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam had mentioned in a hadith if a husband has sabr upon his wife for whatever the reason may be shohar ne sabr kiya allah ki rizq ke liye for the sake for the pleasure of allah and his rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam if a husband makes sabr upon the things of his wife that she did something which she did not like he made sabr allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant him the reward and the tawab equivalent to the reward of which hazrat ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam had endured during his hardship allah 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 kya baat hai madine ki subhanallah zara soche aap that reward which hazrat ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam had received during his hardship the difficult time that he had went and for that difficult time upon that sabr that he had made Allah had granted him tawab and reward for that Allah will grant the husband reward and tawab equivalent to that reward if he makes sabr and patience upon his wife subhanallah kya baat hai and it does not stop there nabi pak sallallahu ta'ala alaihi wasallam aage irshad farmate ki agar bibi sabr karti hai if the husband is incorrect he makes mischief for whatever the issue may be and the wife makes sabr and she has patience sabr ka matlab ye nahi hota hai you go and tell your neighbors the problem you go and tell your friends the problem you go to your house and you complain over and again about the same problem the entire neighborhood the entire society knows about your house problem no sabr ka matlab ye hota hai for the pleasure of allah and rasul sallallahu ta'ala alaihi wasallam you forgive your husband and you make sabr you make you continue with your salah with your ibadat and you do not complain about that problem you can find a solution by telling the problem to somebody who you trust who is a senior in your family but not complain to every person you see the same thing again and over over and again allah allah nabi pak sallallahu ta'ala alaihi wasallam said that if the wife will make sabr allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant her the reward which hazrat asiya radhiyallahu ta'ala anha had received for making sabr with firaun allahu akbar the hardship she had endured may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the tawfiq and the ability to make sabr dear viewers and listeners of the channel aapko ek misal do a wonderful parable subhanallah pehle darush shrif padhte hain sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam salatu wa salamun alayka ya sayyidi ya rasulullah wa sallam alayka ya sayyidi ya nabiy allah so dear viewers and listeners of the channel i'm going to narrate to you a little wonderful small parable subhanallah which will may open your eyes there are deeper issues there are issues which need in which needs attention and consultation i do not refuse and object upon that you should visit go and see the ulama ikram go and visit the mubah, your, your muftiyan ikram in your society in your area and find a solution but do not get upset with your spouse with the waswas of shaitan when a spouse is angry when a husband is angry without thinking without any tarbiyat he just utters the word talaq and a house a relationship is then broken and after many years he regrets how can i go back and many a times na'uzu billah may allah forbid if a person is living in a relationship which is haram and forbidden he had given talaq to his spouse many a times and he says allah will forgive and he continues with his life that's also incorrect indeed is haram for a person to even do that so it's necessary for us to learn those which is fard which is lazim which is important necessary upon a husband as well as for the wife but listen to this incident let's become tolerant let's become forgiving you you receive or you expect forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ki allah hamare gunahon ko maaf farmaye pehle hum bhi to maaf karne wale bane don't you think that we should also be people who are forgiving tolerant amir e ahle sunnat damat barakatuhum al aliya bada acha madani phool mashallah ye waqia apni kitab mein likhte hain in his book for the reference he had mentioned this story that there was a person who was once sitting to have a meal with his spouse with his wife and as he had the meal he ate he noticed that the salt is extra in the food and namak jab zyada ho jaye to gussa bhi aata hoga everybody has a different taste bud everybody has everyone has a different desire and this husband was one of those people who used to get angry bhadak jata tha gussa jata tha and he was angry and especially for those husbands who don't know how to even control their hunger ye bhi huzur ki sirat se seekhe allah allah let's learn from the sirat from the life 
style of our beloved and blessed Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Sabar is for everything. The food came in late or the food was not cooked according to your expectation. Sabar, sabar, sabar. Think of the reward which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give reward you and grant it to you. Subhanallah. So therefore, this person consumed and he ate the first morsel and he realized that the salt is extra in the food. Due to which anger built into him. Bas apne bibi ko kuch bolne wala tha. This thought came to him. That let me forgive my wife today. Aaj mein muaf kar deta hon. She always forgives my mistakes. And I shout her. I correct her. Today I will not tell her anything. Even though the salt was extra from his heart. Without even telling his wife. She did not even know that what the husband is thinking and feeling. He forgiven his wife. After some time. Intiqal ho gaya. He passed away. He then came in a dream of his friend. And his friend asked him. How have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dealt with you? What is your situation? How are you being treated? What is the matter of the hereafter? He answered. He said, well, due to my sins. Due to my excessive guna and sins. Which I have committed in the dunya. I am taken to task. I am being punished. And I was being punished most severely. I was going to be thrown into the hellfire. And as I was dragged for that specific punishment, I heard a sound from the unseen saying that forgive this banda of mine. Forgive this person. For in the dunya he had forgiven my bandi. Allah, Allah, Allah. He had forgiven my slave in the dunya. He had forgiven my bandi. So therefore, I forgive my banda. He forgiven her for adding extra salt. He forgiven his wife for adding extra salt in his food. So therefore, I forgiven him for committing excessive gunas in the dunya. And therefore, he is now forgiven with my rahmat, with my mercy. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the rahmah, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, we should not try and develop this kind of anger. There are many things which the wife does for the husband. For example, if the husband is sitting, he comes tired from work, he throws his sama on one side, she takes your stuff and she puts it one side. You ask for water, she you are presented with water. You ask for tea, you are given tea. You ask for whatever, you are given it. If it's according to your need and she's helping. But sometimes it becomes over the limit. You could have also did it as a husband. That you could pass this to me, but you could have also went up yourself and got it. But she is used over and again, over and again, over and again. Ten times go and dish out, ten times go and make the food hot. Ten times make tea, or this wasn't right, that wasn't right. So there are things which she does as a favor and we cannot see that. And sometimes if they have done something which gets us upset as men, we trigger so quickly. Many a times, Allah Akbar, Allah Azza wa Jal forbid, if any spouse is beating his wife, with a stick by hurting her, abusing her in any way physically or verbally. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. We should ask our spouses for forgiveness. We should ask our spouses for, for muafi, for forgiveness. Ki hum ek ko maaf kare, dar guzar kare. Ek ko maaf kar de. For years we are not talking. But learn from shari'at what the shari'a says about the subhanallah. So therefore, if this is the matter, that we should learn to help Haad Batana, then learn from the seerah of our Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Yeh toh amne pehle bhi kaha hai, ki our beloved Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam is the best role model. Hazreti Aisha Siddiqa radiyallahu ta'ala anha says, in the hadith, she says that Nabi Paak sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam used to patch his own clothes. Nabi Paak sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam would fix his own shoes when it is broken, when it is torn. Nabi Paak sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam would knit in his own bedding. She said, Nabi Paak sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa would do all those things which a man does in the house on his own without anyone's help. Allah Allah. Could you imagine Nabi Paak sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, Allah's Nabi, Allahu Akbar, the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our master, our aqa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is setting a perfect example for you and I. You are the ruler of your, of your house, of your environment as a husband. Allah had given you this haq and this rights. But... Are you taking advantage of this rights? Are you utilizing your power and your authority in the wrong way or in the right way? 
This is the thing that you should understand. This is the tarbiyat that we need to understand. Why we don't know how to be humble? Why we can't be soft? Why we can't be polite? And many a times, the most, or I would say from our experiences, we have noticed that the main reason for having fights or disputes and arguments in the house is that when both the sides want to be equal, one has to be dominant upon the other. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had granted this to the husband, that the husband is more dominant than the wife. And this needs to be realized between both of them because this is from the Quran, from the Sunnah of the Holy Rasul, from the Hadith of the Holy Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar. Let me tell you dear views on the Sunnah Madani channel. Kaash ham iski islah kar le. I should rectify this first. If I don't know how to laugh in my own house, but when I go outside, I'm able to smile with my relatives. I'm able to smile. Smiling is sadaqah, subhanallah. Bhaju ke saad, dosto ke saad, rishtadaro ke saad, kaam ke jage pe, wherever you go in the society, hug karte hain, baat karte hain, we talk, we laugh, we act so nice as nothing happens. But when we enter our homes, it's possible that we are not talking to our spouse for days. Ek hafta ho gaya, do hafte ho gaya, two weeks, one month, one year. Not sharing the same room, not having conversation with our children, not speaking to them, no kalam, no talk, no baat How do you expect a good relationship when there is no communication, there is no trust? There is no trust. There is never going to be muhabba in a link and love between both. So therefore, for the for the connection to grow, it's very important to your views and lesson Madhini channel. Hamis Chisko Samjay Hazate. Luqman rahmatullahi ta'ala ali. Hazrat Sayyidina Luqman rahmatullahi ta'ala ali. Kafarman hai. This great personality says that an intelligent person is he who acts, who behaves like a child in his home and behaves like a man in the outside world. Take this from those who are giving us nasihat and advice because they are the intellectual people. Subhanallah. Allah had blessed them with wisdom. The salihin, the awliya, our pious predecessors, so beautifully farmate, bachi kitara ghar me raho. In other words, be polite, be humble, do not snap for everything, do not back chat for everything. You are always not right. There are times when you are also wrong. And because she cannot overpower you, she cannot dominate you because she knows you have muscle, you are muscular, you may you may squeeze her, may you may hurt her verbally or physically. Therefore, she would not fight for her rights. But you have violated her rights. You rather ask for the return of your rights in the dunya. If you have violated anyone's rights, you rather pay that in the world because in the hereafter it will be very, very severe. Therefore, dear viewers and listeners of Madhini channel, aye, let's make sincere tawbah in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will make tawbah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our major and minor sins. Let's listen to the rights of the husband as well, subhanAllah. As we are listening, how the husband should behave, how the wife should behave, the woman should also try. that your husband works very hard. Also learn regarding the rights or regarding the ahadith which our beloved Nabi, Pyare Aqa, Madine Wale Mustafa, sallallahu ta'ala Listen to this hadith. Nabi Pak sallallahu ta'ala said, إِذَا صَلَّتِ الْمَرَأَةُ خَمْسَهَا That woman who reads all her five salah, Namaz. She performed all her five salah. And she fasted in the month of Ramadan al mubaraka Subhanallah, Subhanallah. And she protects her body, her private, from any kind of guna, from every kind of sin. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. And she respects and obeys her husband. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. She performs her salah, five times salah. Ramadan ki roze bhi rakhti hai. Apne jism ki hifazat bhi karti hai. She listens to her husband as well. She obeys her husband. Nabi Apaq sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam said, she will be told on the day of Qiyamah, ki these are the doors of Jannat. From whichever door you wish to go through, you may go through. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Jis darwaze se chahe, takhil ho jau. Enter through the doors that you would desire, subhanallah. So this shows how important the ita'at, the obedience of the husband is. 
you should obey your spouse, respect him. Do not ever make him naraz. Do not make him unhappy. Because this is also against the, the shariat. This is also against the law of Allah and the Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi Meaning for those things which is haqq, for those things which is the truth, it's fine. But for those things which aren't necessary, which are not part of sharia, that is a different case altogether. But a husband should not be upset with his wife. Or the wife should not make her husband naraz. If your husband is doing something really wrong, which is against sharia, it's a different situation altogether. But if he's angry and he's upset about those things which is in accordance to the sharia, then dear spouses, dear viewers and listeners of Madhuri channel, aaj waqt hai. Today is the day. Repent in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear the day when the sun will be one and a quarter mile above your heads and when the earth will be made into copper. Us waqt, the mother-in-law, the father-in-law, the daughter-in-law, jinke wajay se naraz the, ya jinke wajay se naraz ki ka izhar ho raha tha. Those who were the cause of these problems or those who were causing these problems, whether you used to break relationships, whether you used to like to cause problems in order to break relationships, whatever the situation may be, on that day, every single soul will be accountable. Where are we going to hide? Who are we going to answer to? Think about that as well. You have to show your face to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So repent in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As well as that we should always remember that our beloved Nabi sallallahu ta'ala regarding the rights of the husband, he had also mentioned that the woman should look after the wealth of the husband. Shayad is wajay se ghar mein issues hai ki bibi paisa nahi samal paati hai, paisa kharch kar deti hai, she spends the wealth, she doesn't listen to the husband, she buys and she uses the money, she abuses the money instead of using the money. Ek misal de raha hoon, samjhane ke liye for our respected and esteemed viewers and listeners of Vandani channel. To ye bhi sun le, our beloved Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam had mentioned from amongst you, every person is a ruler. From amongst you, tum mein se har shakhs hakim hai. From amongst you, every person is a ruler. And you will be questioned upon your subject. You will be questioned upon those things which Allah had made you a ruler upon. Subhanallah. A man is the ruler of his house. Ghar ka mali. A man is the hakim and the ruler of his house. A woman is a ruler for her husband's house and her children. Subhanallah, subhanallah. She is the ruler of the husband's house as well as the children. So therefore, Nabi Pak sallallahu ta'ala said, every person is a hakim, a ruler. If the husband has certain rights, the woman also has certain rights. Each one are rulers and they will be questioned upon that on the day of Qiyamah, on the day of judgment. They will be asked about certain things. So, we should try and practice upon those things which we have heard, inshallah. It goes on, dear viewers and listeners of Madhini channel. Baat ye hai ki, 30 years of our marriage have come out. Perhaps 40 years. Kabi kabi to aisa hota hai ki the marriage only lasts one week or one month for pretty issues. It was about the mahar. It was about understanding. It was about the sunnah of the Holy Rasul sallallahu ta'ala wasallam. We have become so modernized that our weddings take place according to the dunya bi tariqe. It does not take place in accordance to the sunnah of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala wasallam. Pehle se hamko pata ho, this is just an madani pool inshallah azza wa that hame koshish ye chahiye. We should try and rectify ourselves first and then the people of the entire world. So I make this intention inshallah azza wa I would learn those masail which pertain to marriage to nikah. Even if you are married, it's never too late. You can join the Madani Qafilas of Da'wati Islam, subhanAllah. You can go to the Jami'at, you can go to the Darul Iftas of Da'wati Islami in your society, in your area, inshallah. And you can refer to the ulama and to the scholars, inshallah, and ask them to teach you and narrate to you the masail of, uh, which pertain to marriage, inshallah. Learn the hukuk and the rights of your wife, and the wife should learn the hukuk of the husband. And try to understand and over the years, whatever had happened, forgive the past. Forgive the past. Try to create a new future. For no reason, there's no head and there's no tail at times. Fight happens. It's beyond explanation and imagination. So inshallah, I leave you with this few words. 
let's make this dua in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah azza wa jal forgives our major and minor sins. Do not forget wherever you are. I must try to reform myself and the people of the entire world. Insha'Allah azza wa jal sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad. Show me the right path, oh Allah. Show